we know that radioactive radiations are of three types. There is alpha radiation, beta radiation and gamma radiation. Now all the three radiations have their own properties. But why do we need to study them in so much detail? What is the requirement? The reason is that radioactive radiation is used in many different fields by human beings. So let's understand what are the different applications of radioactive radiation. Now, do you know how cancer is treated? It is treated with the help of radioactive radiation. So how does it work? Now, alpha, beta and gamma radiation have their own penetrating power. So if we talk about alpha particle, it can easily stop by our skin. While in the case of beta particle, it can penetrate our skin and reach our tissues. While the gamma radiation can easily penetrate our bones and organs. Now, this penetration power is used to treat cancer. So let's see how. So as you can notice, there is a specialized equipment which allows the radioactive radiation to go inside our body. But it is done in a very controlled environment so that the cells which are affected by a certain disease are only exposed to the radioactive radiation while other cells are left unexposed. So what happens is that when radioactive radiation enters our body, because it is done in a controlled environment, it only damages the cells which have a problem, which are affected with cancerous growth and other cells are left undisturbed. So we are able to treat cancer because of the penetration power of radioactive radiation. So radioactive radiations are used to cure cancer and cobalt 60 is one of the radioactive elements that is used to treat cancer. So radiations from cobalt 60 are used to treat cancer. So can you answer this question? Radiations from cobalt 60 are used to treat A flu, B AIDS and C cancer. What do you think is the right answer? Well, the right answer is cancer. So radiations from cobalt 60 are used to treat cancer. Now treatment of cancer is not the only application of radioactivity. There are many other applications. For example, weak radioactive isotopes are used as tracers. Now what do we mean by tracers? Let's understand. Radioactive element is injected into the body. It helps in tracking the status of different body parts. It passes through by tracking the movement of the radiation emitted by the radioactive element. So what exactly is happening? Well, when we allow the radioactive element to go inside the body, that is when we inject a radioactive element in the body, then this radioactive element travels throughout the body. Now, how do we understand where exactly it is traveling? Well, this radioactive element is emitting radioactive radiation, isn't it? In the form of either alpha, beta or gamma radiation. Now, this radiation can easily be tracked because it can easily penetrate our skin, particularly beta and gamma radiation. So when these penetrate our skin and come out, then we can know the position of the radioactive element inside our body. And also according to the amount of radiation which we get, we can actually know the status of the particular organ where the radioactive element is currently positioned. And that is how we actually use radioactive elements as tracers so that we can know the status of different organs inside our body. So the technician injects a radioactive tracer inside the patient's body. Now when this radioactive tracer goes inside the body, because it is radioactive, it releases radiation. Now this gamma radiation can easily penetrate our skin and come out. So the radiation comes out and it is detected by a detector. 
Now, multiple number of radiations are detected by the detector, which are from different angles, and because of which we get the full map of the organ. And with this particular image or this particular map, we can easily understand what is the problem in that particular organ. So without actually operating the human body, we are able to detect where the problem lies inside the body. And this can be done with the help of radioactive tracers because they can easily penetrate our skin and come out. So if we place a radioactive element of low power inside our body, then the radiation released by that particular radioactive element can be detected and we can get the map of any organ inside our body. Now, we know that gamma rays have good penetration power and they can actually kill living cells. That's how we cure cancer. Now, the same property is also used to sterilize bandages, dressings, syringes and other medical equipment. What do we understand by sterilization? Well, we basically want to make these equipment free of any microorganisms. And when microorganisms are exposed to gamma radiation, then they are killed just like our cancer cells because germs or microorganisms are also made up of living cells. So if it can kill those cells, it can definitely kill cells inside the microorganisms. So Bandages, dressings, syringes and other medical equipment are sterilized by exposing them to gamma radiation. Now, the same radioactive elements are also used as radioactive tracers in plants. So, if we want to understand in detail which nutrient goes to which particular part of the plant, how do we know that? For that, what we do is we inject radioactive tracers mixed with essential nutrients of the plants. So once they are injected, the nutrients will go to the desired place in the plant and because of the radioactive tracer mixed with it, we can actually track its movement and know that which nutrient goes to which particular part. So research on plants becomes much easier with the help of radioactive tracers. So it helps us to understand the flow of nutrients to different parts of the plant. Now, another important application of radioactivity is that age of rocks and fossils can be estimated using radioactivity by a process called carbon dating. So, by this process of carbon dating, we can actually know the age of rocks and fossils. So, how is it done? Well, the process is very simple. Now, every living organism in its lifetime absorbs carbon-14, which is a radioactive isotope of carbon inside its body. Now, amount of carbon-14, which is supposed to be inside a living organism, is approximately fixed. So, we know that at the time of death, a particular amount of carbon-14 was inside that organism's body. Now, when we find fossil of an organism, then what do we do? we calculate the amount of carbon-14 which is there in the fossil right now. And we already know the amount of carbon-14 which was supposed to be there inside the organism when it died. So what do we do? We calculate because the final amount will always be less than the original amount. Now we know that radioactive elements decay. So definitely the amount of carbon-14 will keep on decreasing over the years. So initially it was 100%. Now this carbon-14 will take approximately 5730 years to become half of what the original quantity was. Similarly, it will take 11,460 years for the carbon to become one-fourth of what it was originally. So from this calculation, we can know how old a fossil is. Similarly, even in rocks, we find radioactive material. So, the amount of decay that occurred will help us know how much decay has occurred and from that calculation, we can actually know that how many years have passed by since this rock was formed. So, this is how we find age of rocks and fossils using 
carbon dating because we know that radioactive elements decay and their speed of decay is known. So we can clearly understand that how many years it took for the radioactive element to decay to this particular level and that is how we calculate age of many historical things including rocks and fossils. Now another very important application of radioactivity is that radioactive elements are used to produce electricity and it is a very important application of radioactivity. Now what is the source of this particular electricity? Well radioisotopes such as uranium-235 are used as fuel for nuclear reactors. So again radioactive elements also help us produce electricity. Now another important application is that beta particles are used to control thickness of paper, metal sheets and plastic during manufacture. So we know that beta particles have penetration power so they can easily penetrate thin sheets of paper or aluminium and this property is used to calibrate rollers so that we can have sheets of desired thickness. So this is one of the most important application of radioactive elements in the industry. So radioactivity is used in medical, scientific and industrial fields. Penetration and ionization properties of radioactive materials are primarily utilized in various applications. So primarily penetration and ionization properties of radioactive elements are used in various applications of radioactive elements. So you see that is why we study radioactive elements in detail because there are lots of applications where radioactive elements are used in medical, scientific as well as industrial fields. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can also register for free at deltastep.com to get all learning resources as per ICSE, CBSE, IB, Cambridge or any other curriculum. Over 5000 amazing lectures across maths, science, English and social science. Our unique interactive video technology keeps you engaged and our iDictionary feature allows you to quickly revise any concept. Master each topic at your own pace with our adaptive practice technology and 1 million plus questions. Get instant answers and detailed solutions. Be exam ready by taking unlimited mock tests. Performance analysis along with actionable feedback personal tutors to resolve your slightest of doubts. That's not all. You also get amazing prizes like playstations, iPads, watches and many more along with certificates through our earn as you learn program. So at deltastep.com learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.